Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at the Derwent XL Graphite Block set of six. This is a block product from Derwent. You know they have a bunch of different pencils and blocks and pan paints and things to satisfy your creative needs. And I thought it'd be fun to take a look at this set. I've really enjoyed using the Graphitint pencils and Graphitint pan paints in the past, so when I saw that these had come out, I was really curious about giving them a try. They come in a set of six, or you can buy them open stock. So if you're watching this tutorial and you're like, boy, I really like that blue. It's so pretty, it's so granulating, it's just lovely, but I don't think I'd use the other colors. You can just buy that single color. Same goes if you use one up, you could buy one to replace it. Um, these come, if you get the set, it comes in a foam, um, like a foam case within a tin, which seems to be how they have transitioned a lot of their um, block sets, like the Inktense block now comes in like a foam seated uh, case like this, and their charcoals come in a foam thing like this, and I think it's to kind of maybe be a little bit absorbent and also separate the colors so they don't rub up against each other and um, transfer color on one another. It also makes it easy to lift them up or to use a brush. So I like the packaging quite a bit and um, I think Derwent does a pretty good job on their block packaging anyways. I usually take the pencils out of their cases and put them in some in uh, like cups or something for ease of use but I do like this. Uh, here's a swatch on watercolor paper and I have washed like added water to them. Over here I took the Graphitint pan color that seemed the most close just to see like if you got the Grafton pan paints and you're not going to pick these up and draw with them you know you might not it might not be worth adding them um, so there were a couple of blues neither of them were exactly the same as that blue but I just kind of swatched out what seemed the closest over to the edge so it does seem to be um, mostly unique colors from the pan paints which I'll show you this is the pan paint swatch here just give you an idea of how they differ. The green is fairly close there. So we've got olive green, we've got dark Prussian, raw umber, burnt umber, which almost looks like a sanguine kind of, or almost like a russet. Um, we've got soft charcoal and very soft charcoal. So if you wanted to just do like your standard water soluble graphite or even dry graphite, you could use these two. You could also take like your ink tense blocks or other watercolors you have and mix it in with these if you want to tint your own charcoal and um, have a little versatility there. That also means if you um, are not sure about getting a set like this, but maybe you want to try one block, you could do that and then tint it with the other things you have to see if you like it before investing in a set. Now I'll tell you the retail price on this is like $42, but I just checked Blick today. The day I'm recording this review is uh, March 9th and they had this set on sale for $21 and I'm gonna have to see what the individual ones were going for. The individual blocks they had for $350 so you know I would def it seems to be the sale runs quite frequently so if it's not on sale I would urge you to wait a little bit unless you have to have it today honestly. So um, the light fastness on this is really good. They all have a light fast rating of eight. I'm just going to double check myself here because I've got the the uh, thing. Yep, everything is a lighting um, light fast of eight, and they are all vegan friendly. So if that's <laughs> if that's important to you, you've got that peace of mind. Now I want to give you a tip on the Derwent products. If you go to the Derwent website and you look up the product you're interested in, or maybe the product you have at home already, and then you scroll to the bottom of that the sales page on the Derwent website, there will be a downloadable color chart and on all those color char charts there are light fast ratings so let's say you have the color soft pencils and you want to make an artwork to sell and you want to make sure it's light fast you could go through and pick out all the light fast colors in that range in any of their ranges so I know a lot of people don't know about that and I just wanted to mention it in case you have those pencils or any products in the line you can look it up so uh, so we've compared the uh, this is what the pan paints look like so you can use a brush directly to the blocks like you would these pan paints so this would be nice if you like to use big blocks also big block brushes also if you like to pick it up and draw with it these would be more useful if you want more colors in a smaller amount of space there are unique colors so it's up to you whether you need them all or if you just want to go smaller. Now there's also the Graphitint pencils, which I'm just bringing up because I think they're very similar as far as what the product is. Of course, it's a, um, I got my, my little rack over here. So it's a pencil with a pretty thick lead, but you know, it's definitely a pencil. So if you want to get out gobs and gobs of color at once, you probably want one of the, the block or the pan set. But here's just to show you what the colors look like compared to the, um, compared to the colors there. It's funny, they call that dark Prussian, but it looks a lot like ocean um, on my pencil swatch. The green, I would say, looks 
um, looks more like ivy than meadow, but they're pretty close. Um, let's see, the umber looks like... Uh, kind of looks like sage. It doesn't look exactly like any of those uh, those colors. The what do they call that one? The burnt umber. That was raw umber. The burnt umber looks kind of like uh, oh, it's kind of like the chestnut actually. Russet is a little bit. Is there a russet? And russet it's a little bit browner in the, the set here. Um, warm gray looks kind of like the soft charcoal, and the very soft looks kind of like black. But I do feel like this has a more color payout than the pencils. It could just be that you've got a big block versus the pencils, but um, you know, that's just something I wanted to mention. There you can see, if you want to pause it, um, let me put this down a little bit lower so you can see that. And this is them swatched on black here. If you want to pause this and uh, and look at the colors a little closer, feel free. But I really like the, uh, well, yeah, I have had the pencils for probably 10 years. I've had them for a long time since they first came out. Um, I have to say I prefer the pan paints to the pencils, but I really like looking together, working them together. And I kind of think I prefer these blocks to the pan paints because I can pick it up and sketch with it. And I just feel like I can get a lot more color. And I feel like it granulates a little bit better, but it, that could just be a, a factor of getting more color. Uh, I'm not sure. They're all very similar as far as like what goes on the paper, what's in there, the usable product. It all is very similar. So whether you want it in different formats or you're like, hey, I got the pencils, I'm good. I just wanted to put that all out there so you don't buy the same thing twice unless you want it in that other format. And I'm not saying they're the exact same formats because I'm not a chemist. I don't know for sure, but, um, but they definitely feel similar. The pencils might be a little bit harder, so they might have like more graphite in them to, as opposed to color just to make them strong enough. I don't know, because like I said, I'm not a chemist, but I thought it might be fun to do like a, um, maybe just like a, a little sketch here. Um, I think it'd be cool to maybe do, because I love rocks and I love streams. Maybe we'll just do like a, a little bit of a stream kind of coming through. I'm just fooling around, guys. This is not going to be like, <laughs> it's not going to be the fine art you've come to expect on my channel. I'm going to do some rocks. I think some mossy rocks, because we get that really pretty olive green in there. So maybe like we'll do a little little stream with some rocks. Boy, those are way too evenly spaced. I gotta, I gotta break that up a little bit. We'll put another rock back there. Maybe the other just look a little dense of rocks. Now let's put, uh, let's put a little tree. We'll go right on the side of this, the stream. Now, of course, if you want to be a little bit more particular, you could sketch in with the um, with the pencils. Now these are a little bit messy, like my fingers, oh goodness, my fingers are getting a little bit of graphite-y, but nowhere near as messy as like pastels or like the, the XL charcoal. I'll show you the XL charcoals right here. These are super duper messy, <laughs> but uh, the graphite are not quite as messy. They're still a little messy, but I mean, it's art. I mean, come on guys. You can handle a little bit of mess. So this is the very soft, which is going to give me more of a black edge. I want to get the edge of the the stream here. I'm just kind of BSing my way through this little <laughs> this little scene here because I'm just, you know, making it up. I'm making it up, but that's okay. Um, maybe a little bit of brown on the shore. Oh, look at that! Look how shiny that side of this that's been polished by the. Um, this has been just like up against the foam and look how shiny and polished it is. And this is a side I've been using a brush to pick up color with and it's all like, it, it's like the watercolory part comes up. They do remind me a bit of the ink tents. So maybe do a little bit of, um, a little bit of sky coming down here too. I hope this looks good when I add water. <laughs> I'm working on Arches watercolor paper. This is a sketchbook that my friend Rosie made me. I'm not going to put moss on the rocks yet, but I think I will just go in and put a little bit of a, a little bit of green back there. Okay, and I think this is the lighter of the grays. I'm just going to give the rocks a little bit of a base coating in here. And let's see what we got. <laughs> let's see what happens, guys. Um, so I'm going to keep this out actually like this because I'm going to be picking up some of this color like a watercolor. You might want to have the stamp side up just because it's a little bit rougher, it might be a little bit easier to get color, I don't know. 
Of course, they're, I've already rubbed off the, uh, the writing on that one. <laughs> oh well. Let's see. I'm going to start by... Now I didn't put a lot of pigment down. I, I went really lightly and I, I have quite a bit of color there. I'm using a Taclon brush because I feel that you could use a watercolor brush, but when you're dissolving the... I'm just going to go around this tree. I'm just going to kind of pretend it's not there. I can always... I can always... Uh, do the tree on top of it too. When you're picking up the color from the block, you're going to get a lot more and it's um, a lot gentler on your brush, but when you're dissolving the the pigment on the paper, I feel like you want to be, you want to have a little bit more of a rugged brush, so like a golden tacklon brush versus a um, versus a softer watercolor brush. Like um, well I use the synthetic squirrels, but still they're very soft and they could be quite easily damaged I think so I just try to keep it a little bit a little bit lighter I want to kind of add some water in there and see and see what happens this is a really robust paper arches can handle a lot of water so I'm not worried about overdoing it I just kind of want to see what the what it will all do oh you know what something else I want to try is a spattering technique with these like I do with a pencil sometimes I'm gonna try Kind of spattering that off, get some like. I only have one thing of water going too, guys, and it's really grungy. So, hopefully, oh, I love that. See, this is this is a technique I like to do with the pencils, but it's really hard to get that much, um, that much stuff. I want to get a little bit of that. I'll, I don't want to waste that all that goodness, all that yumminess on my brush. We'll put that in that tree. That is one reddish tree. So is that called burnt? Yeah, that was burnt umber, but boy, it, I would say maybe burnt sienna. This is very red for a burnt umber, in my opinion, anyways. You can, you can let me know what you think, but to me, that's very, very red. Not that it's good or bad. I'm just saying it doesn't really look like burnt umber to me. But you know what? I wouldn't even know what the color was unless I went to the website and went to the chart. So a rose by any other name. Wouldn't it be a sweet? I want to do some flicking of that green. I think that'll look good. So my big critique of this would be that I would like more colors, please. <laughs> that would be my big critique because I do really like products like this. I love the Inktense blocks. And in fact, you know what? I just use them with my blocks, really. My Inktense blocks. That would make the most sense. I already have those colors. And those are already available as part of, you know that line of products. So I guess I shouldn't be too greedy about wanting more colors in this line because I can just use those. But you know, that's something that comes to mind. Like I'm thinking, uh, that's where the pan paint set would be a little bit more up my alley just because there's more colors. But I do like the fact that I can get in there with a bigger brush. So let's add some water to our little stream here. There, you don't have as much of the colors like when, when you're doing watercolor, if I was to paint those trees on top of a background that was that wet, they would really kind of whoosh out of control and, um, and just run into one another. And the pigment in this feels a little heavier and it doesn't seem to be prone to doing that so much. I feel like I can work right up against um, an area that's wet and not suffer. Like, look, I'm putting ripples in the water and that's wet. The paper's wet and it's not giving me a hard time. So... You know, for someone that might not be really used to watercolor, uh, but wants to have a little bit of that, um, you know, wants a water soluble product they can take out urban sketching or plein air painting, this might be just the ticket because you're not going to have, you're not going to have to uh, know about watercolor properties. You're not going to have that, uh, some of those limitations. I think it might be a little bit more intuitive because you can use it dry and then you can use it wet. One of my favorite things in watercolor is though, and it's free, so I love it. You take an old gift card, an old credit card. This is my old uh, <laughs> National Park um, pass from a couple of years ago. You know that you get a different one every year. So I just saved it and cut it up. Um, Cause you couldn't reload it. And like, I can take this. I can like, hmm, I want a little more color. I love painting rocks. I always look at rocks. I'm out walking. I did a woods walk this morning with a dog because um, it wasn't, it was frozen enough out so it wasn't all smooshy. And um, I just love to look at the rocks. You know, you can kind of scrape, get some cool textures. 
This feels like it's more of a demo than a review, but that's okay. You know, I've reviewed the other, I think I've reviewed the other similar products. Oh, I like doing that. And you can even uh, draw up little light branches. If the paper is like, I know with the product like this, or if the paper is kind, oh, I can pull up a birch tree. I'll put a birch tree back there. Oh, you know what? Let me get my scissors. I'm gonna cut that a little bit skinnier so I can make a skinny birch tree. Look at that. That's gonna be a nice birch tree. A couple birch trees. Poor waterlogged birch trees. <laughs> They're awfully close to the shore, but eh, what are you gonna do? <laughs> nature will find a way. Right? Nature will find a way. Oh yeah, I was gonna put some moss on my I'm put some moss on my rocks. But you know what? I think the nice thing about that is that it, I don't feel like you have to like do things wet into wet like immediately like you would with watercolor to get certain effects. It's very forgiving. So for that, I think it would be really nice for beginners and for for plein air painters. Let me do a little bit of a spattering on that on those rocks. Give it maybe a little bit of a granity granity effect. Like work some up into a lather here, then I'll. If I can flick some off. I don't know if I have enough. Oh yeah, I'm getting a little bit of texture there. Oh, and I could just stipple as my brush gets a little dry. Although, you know what? That would be a better technique to do with my green for the moss effect, I think. Get some shadows in there. Add the goodness to the closer rocks so they stand out. These ones in the back can just be kind of like smudges. Nobody really care, cares what's going on with those rocks, although I might scrape out a little highlight. Arches paper is just super robust, so if you're doing this and you're just tearing your paper up and it's making a mess, um, if you have it in your budget, try like Arches or another 100% cotton paper. They're just It's just a little bit more, um, it just can handle a little bit more. So let's do that stippling technique. I really should grab a a deerfoot stippler or a sponge or something, but you know what? Let's just see what let's see what this will do. Since this is kind of a drier medium, it um, it will kind of splay your bristles a little bit, so you can get kind of like that. You can stipple with it, even though this isn't a brush that usually stipples well. Get some moss. This is a really pretty color. I think those two colors would be really lovely just to, even if you have no, you know, gumption or no inclination to do, gumption's the wrong word, even if you don't have any desire to do any um, water soluble graphite, I think those are such unique, pretty colors that I think using them for like landscape painting or just adding them to a watercolor palette would be quite useful. Some grasses in there, why not? Some grasses in front of these poor waterlogged birch trees. Let's push them back. I'm gonna push them off the shore a little bit so they don't water get all waterlogged. I love my birch trees. And my rocks. Let's make this a little bit more dense. The more you observe your surroundings, um, the better you'll be at doing like imagination landscapes. You know, you'll be walking down the road, minding your own business, and you'll be like, oh, look at that rock, look at those trees, look at that squirrel. And then you'll come home and you'll be like, ooh, that would be fun to draw or paint. And you'll sit down and you'll draw it and you'll be like, wow, I did that all by myself. And you're gonna feel so good when you do that. And then you're gonna tell me about it and I'm gonna say, I knew you could do it. And I'm gonna feel good for you. I'm gonna feel proud of you. Okay, let's do, let's add a little bit of a shadow on the side of these birch trees. We can use, um, let's see, no, I bet we can use a little of this for doing the little mixy mixy. Let's take a little, a little of the, uh, the raw umber, a little bit of the very soft graphite and make ourselves a little shadow color to add on the edges of those trees. Let's just say the sun's coming in this way. We'll put all, put all our, put our little shadow. Let's see, what if we mix the, um, 
the blue and the burnt umber, that make us a nice gray too. They'll probably granulate pretty well. Oh, I should do a mixing chart with these. That would be really fun. That'd be really cool to see. Now I'm gonna put the little splotches on my tree with the, I've been using this just like three quarter, three eighths inch Zen All Media Filbert this whole time. Those look, that looks really dark, but I think when it dries, it's not gonna be quite so dark. I'm going to grab a liner though and do some little spindly little, some spindly little uh, branches off. So my review of these products, and I want to be completely clear, I've done some freelance work for Derwent and they sent me these to try out for free. So I just want to make you aware, in case you haven't been following me for very long, that I do have a re relationship with this company. I really like them. Um, the people I've worked with from there, and I've, I've used their products since before I ever worked with them. Since the 90s, I've used their products. So, But I just want to make you aware that I do have a relationship with this company. And if that you think that clouds my judgment, um, I just want you to be aware of it. I don't think it does, but you know, I do have a favorable opinion of this company and I do want to just make you aware of it in case you uh, want to weigh my review a little more cautiously. You have the right to do that. So that's why I wanted to do a demo. That way you can kind of see, you know, how they are in action. And you can watch the tutorial for that one, the Carnes painting, because I started off with these these products, um, the, the, the XL Graphite. And you can kind of see through the stages that it went, because I honestly, there was some like, I, I preferred other stages of that painting as we went through. I kind of wasn't absolutely in love with how it ended. I didn't think it was, it was terrible or anything, but very, these are very thirsty. I feel like the water just like immediately absorbs in. I think that's why they do the, um, I think that's probably why they do the foam. Oh, use my liner brush. These are a little bit opaque on black. I can't remember if, if I mentioned that when I showed the black swatch. They're a little bit opaque. So you're not going to get that super luminous watercolor look if you do a painting with just these. I think if you mix these in, though, especially like the blue and the green with your other watercolors, that would be really pretty. I think it would just be really nice. But hey, you know what? This is a quick little demo. I'm just going to leave that as it is. I think it's pretty. I think it's fun. If you were sitting outside and you just brought these with you and your sketchbook and, uh, you know, a brush, or maybe like a couple of water brushes in your pocket, I think that this would be really great because you pick it up, you can sketch really quickly, you add your water, you use a brush for some details. Um, I really like products like this. Um, you know, I tend to really enjoy the water soluble products. Out of all of the water soluble products here that I have, the XL blocks, the Graphitint paint pans, and the pencils, if I could just have one, I think I would choose. I think I would choose the the, the blocks, even though there's fewer colors, because I like that just being able to pick up, pick it up, sketch with it, add water, paint with it, and do all of it, and use a big brush. But I do like the other products, so I would say I would do the blocks would be my first choice, the pan paints would be my second choice, and the pencils would be my third choice if I had to rate them. But we're all different, and if you're somebody who loves to work with like your rubber stamper or your <clears throat> adult coloring book enthusiast, the pencils are going to make way more sense than any of these products because you can still, you know, take one of the pencils and you know pick up color from the tip and then paint with it, you know. You can do that. Plus, you can color. You can sharpen. You can color it. Color with it. So it just depends on what you like to do. I love to go outside and paint in the summer. So having something like this or having this set here, those would be more useful. And honestly, I think this would be just because, like, even though it's bigger to carry, because I could sketch with it and I could just have a couple water brushes in my pocket. For me, this would be a little more useful. The thing I'll say about Derwent products is you're not gonna love them all because you're not supposed to. They have a variety because everyone's different and you're gonna love some and you're not gonna love others. So um, there are products that I like. I really like these and these are good. I like them all right. I would 
like these most for a life drawing class, but for sitting down in my studio, they're really messy and really dusty, and I probably wouldn't want to use them inside in a small sketchbook, and I tend to work inside in a small sketchbook a lot. So, but these, so these are much more suited to me than these are, and that's okay, because <clears throat> there's a bunch of different products for whoever, for whatever you like and whoever you are. Just to show you, they lose some of their shine when they are when you add water to them, that graphite shine, just to let you know, but there, it will still be there, but it is gonna go away a little bit. Um, but these are opaque over darker washes or darker colors like black paper. So if you like to do line and wash, you might find that these will, um, if you use them thickly, they will cover up your lines a little bit. So you might wanna do your lining afterwards after everything's dry. That's another thing to consider. You can kind of see how they're getting a little bit chalky as they dry and, um, that's just part of the graphite not being translucent, being more reflective and being more opaque, plus whatever the colors they're using in there, which I think might be similar to what they use in the ink tense blocks. I think you can mix, I mean, if you really want to be on a budget and you already have the ink tense blocks, you could get just like the very soft or the soft charcoal and mix them together and see what you get that way. So, you know, as always, I say, use what you have first, but if you think this might be a good option to add into what you already have, then, you know, give it a whirl. I hope you enjoyed this and found this helpful. Hope you enjoyed the little demo. Maybe you painted along. It was, you know, fun, easy to do. And I hope it inspires you to get your supplies out and play with them today. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy the reviews here on this channel. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.